Here is a guide to the future for medical students. A lot of medical students worldwide have been reaching out to me for career advice and choices and preferences. What to expect from the future of medicine and healthcare. So if you're a medical student, this is your complete package of knowledge and understanding everything you need to know about how you practice medicine in five to 10 years or how we will deliver healthcare. If you are not a medical student, then this video might not be so interesting to you, but maybe we will see. I've been teaching medical students about digital health and artificial intelligence for over a decade now. Plus, I used to be a medical student going through medical school. So if you are a medical student, I feel for you, dear brothers and sisters. I know how hard it is to be a medical student and then try to find out which career path would be the best for you, especially in an age with full of digital health technologies and wearable sensors, artificial intelligence, generative AI, empowered patients, all these changes and transformative things will have an impact on how you will practice medicine after you finish medical school. So here are a few thoughts and ideas that I hope will help you find your future career paths. Digital health is a cultural transformation. I know that the last decade was full of technological advancements and developments and announcements, but digital health is primarily a cultural transformation. You need to understand that the way the paternalistic healthcare ecosystem has been transforming towards an equal level partnership between you and your future patients is much more impactful on how you will do your job than which health sensor or AI-based algorithm comes out next year. You need to acknowledge the cultural background of this change, because only then you can see how to implement technologies or how to start working with these empowered patients in this new medical team. A medical team that now consists of you, medical professionals, and patients. You form one team. This is simply unprecedented in the history of medicine. Patient empowerment is a paradigm shift. I think patient empowerment, the idea that patients can finally contribute to their care, is simply the biggest milestone in the history of this profession. Patient empowerment means that empowered patients can now start bringing knowledge, insights, support, second opinion, data, and technologies to the next doctor-patient meeting. They want to take active role in their health and disease management. And of course, they will need you for that. This paradigm shift means that your role will be a role of a guide in the jungle of health decisions and data and information. And the role of your patient will be an empowered role, bringing insights to the care, sharing responsibility with you. AI is here to support you, not to replace you. Please don't believe the news and the announcements from investors. AI will not replace medical professionals, and I have a thousand reasons for that. I published some of them, by the way, in these articles and videos. AI is amazing at doing tasks that are repetitive and or data-based, but being a physician means a lot more than that. You have to provide empathy. You have to show compassion. You have to be creative. You have to have intuition. You have to bring together all the amazing modalities of treating a patient, how they speak to you, what the first symptom that they mention, what you can measure about them, lab markers, biomarkers, health signs, vital signs, all these things in one package. So it's much more than just analyzing data. But without AI, you will simply not be able to practice medicine. That's how much data you will have to handle on a day-to-day -day basis. Generative AI is exciting, so please learn prompt engineering. The newest breakthrough of the AI revolution, generative AI, means that there are large language models like ChatGPT that can save you a lot, a lot of time while writing research papers or just writing emails or newsletters for your practice, even designing the logo for your medical practice. I can go on forever about what text-based tasks generative AI could do for you. So the one skill you need is called prompt engineering the ability to design text-based briefs or prompts for large language models to get the absolute best outcome. I will share a few tips and tricks with you about getting better at prompt engineering, but it's, it's important for you to acquire this skill because it will be, generative AI will be the ultimate interface between you and the range of AI-based technologies you will have to use while practicing medicine. Technologies will impact medical specialties in specific ways. Most of the questions I get from you are about which medical specialty I should choose. There will be a radiology in 10 years time or shall I become a cardiologist? Well, here is an analysis that will help you make up your mind. 
yourself. Analyze the top 20 medical specialties along two axes. One was about how creative versus how repetitive a medical specialty is regarding the tasks that medical specialty entails. And the other one was about how interaction-based versus how data-based a specialty is. And as you can see, all these 20 specialties can be assigned to a specific spot along these four quadrants. Each quadrant will have its own fate, and I share this, this link with you under the video too. So you can find out which medical specialty will be the closest to your personality, to your long-term purposes, and to your general idea of getting into this wonderful job. You need, and you need to be able to teach digital health literacy. It's not about just health literacy, the idea that, that patients are able to understand what you prescribe for them. It's even more. Digital health literacy means that your patients know how to deal with the technologies they need to do their health or disease management. And it's not enough that they just know it by themselves, most probably you will have to teach this skill to them. Thus, you have to have a quite a good understanding of what digital health literacy means, how you can work with database technologies, AI, smartphone apps, how to find a way in the jungle of data and information in the digital realm. That's up to you. Get used to patient design. Patient design means that we involve patients on the highest level of decision-making in an organization. If it's a healthcare government, it's the minister level. If it's a healthcare company, it's the CEO level. If it's an organization like WHO, it's the director level. Without patient design, how can we think that we can design facilities in hospitals or products or technological services and solutions and apps for them without actively engaging patients in the whole process. Your professions will include patient design in the next couple of years. Don't get hyped up by technologies. A technology must meet a real-life clinical or patient need. Otherwise, it's just a useless technology. Some companies think otherwise. They think that they can develop something, so let's find a patient or clinical need that could be met by this technology that has to work vice versa. First, we have to find a clinical need, something that you are struggling with, or a patient need, something where patients could enjoy using a technology while managing your health, their health or disease. So hyping a technology is as dangerous as being underconfident about what they could deliver to your profession. Please try to have a sort of objective way of looking at and assessing the quality and importance of advanced technologies while trying to find out which ones to implement in your day-to-day -day tasks. So, dear medical student across the globe, I hope that these points and insights and ideas and predictions will help you better manage your career paths. You will find out where to go, which medical specialty to choose, but even more importantly, I hope that you will enjoy becoming medical professionals. I hope that you will enjoy the chance to have real-life conversations with patients, to build trust using your empathy and compassion and your amazing knowledge and dedication to this profession. And of course, only the digital health and AI revolution can bring it to you only if you know how to use these amazing tools. I remain confident that you will be those that will be able to use these tools and I wish you all the success and strength and luck in that process. Bye. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get all the videos about the future of medicine, healthcare, and advanced technologies. Also, please check out medicalfuturist.thinkific.com to access our courses on digital health and AI's role in the future of healthcare. See you there.